Welcome to Bosch Security Systems Telex Radio Dispatch CSOF DFSI Technical Overview. In this video, we will cover technical aspects of Telex's DFSI offering for CSOF, looking at equipment topology, heartbeats, voice and control packet paths, and failover options. We will cover setup and configuration of CSOF and DFSI capable stations. Let's get started. CSOF consoles can be configured to support one of two system architectures. The standalone system, which is the TIA standard, covers a single console to multiple fixed station interfaces. The second architecture is server client based. This exceeds the TIA standard and is proprietary to Telex Dispatch. Using this topology allows additional consoles to be connected to the initial standalone console now becoming the server console. Additionally, a backup server console can be added to the system for redundancy. Please note that CSOF can be configured with backup fixed station interfaces in the event of either equipment or connectivity failure to the primary fixed station. Now that we've discussed the two system deployment topologies, standalone or server client, let's look at how the units intercommunicate and get configured. Looking at the DFSI architecture in regards to heartbeats. At the startup, standalone or server consoles send heartbeat timing information to the fixed station. This indicates how often it expects the fixed station to send heartbeats back to the system. The path for this communication is depicted by the red arrows. The primary fixed station sends heartbeats back to the standalone or server console at the prescribed times, indicating proper operation, as shown here by the blue arrows. In a server client system, the server console also sends heartbeats to client consoles at prescribed times. This indicates proper operation of the server console to the client consoles. This communication is depicted by the yellow arrows. Now we'll review the voice and control packets in detail for a client server install. All clients forward their packets, whether they be voice or control, to the server console, as depicted by the yellow arrows. In the next step, the server console redirects control and voice packets to the primary fixed station. This is depicted by the red arrows. The primary fixed station replies to the server console indicating proper command operation. This is depicted by the blue arrows. The server console communicates all RX voice and control changes from the fixed station to client console. This is depicted by the yellow arrows. Let's now take a detailed look at some of the failover or backup technologies deployed by Telex for our DFSI offering. Remember, earlier we discussed that the server console sends and expects heartbeats at prescribed times to and from the primary fixed station. If the server console fails to receive heartbeats from the primary fixed station, as depicted here by the yellow arrow, it can, if programmed, connect to a backup fixed station, as shown by the blue arrows. If the backup server console fails to receive heartbeats from the server console, as depicted by the yellow arrow, the backup server console will broadcast to all clients its IP address and assume the server responsibilities for communication to the fixed station interface. Note, once the primary server console is restored, CSOFT on the backup server will need to be restarted to resume normal operation. The P25 DFSI global setup screen is accessible from both the Perline signaling setup screen and the edit setup P25 DFSI menu. The console ID field and console type are displayed in the red square. The value entered into the console ID is the ANI displayed when the console transmits or needs to receive a private call. Because of this, each console will have a unique design. The fields to select the console type are also here. Standalone, server, client, client backup server console. Only one may be selected. The backup server ping address is the multicast IP address and port number used for communication between all consoles. This includes servers and clients. It's used to determine if the server is running or down and switches to the backup. This should be a unique port number with inside your system. There are three entries for heartbeats as shown in the red square. The fixed station heartbeat time is the time between heartbeats sent by the fixed station to the CSOF console. The host heartbeat time is the time between CSOF consoles sending heartbeat to the fixed station. The number of missed heartbeats allowed is the number of missed heartbeats from the fixed station before CSOF will terminate communication with the primary fixed station and try to connect again 
or to attempt to connect to the backup fix station. The radio repeater control signal fields include the number of control retries, which represents the number of times a control command will be sent if no acknowledgement is received from the fixed station. The control relay time is the time cease off await before sending the same control command to the fixed station. Packet control fields. The packet control delay is the time cease off await before sending the control command used to insert initial delays into the first sent control command to the fixed station. The Perline signaling setup screen varies based on the type of console selected. Shown here is a standalone console. Programmable fields of concern for a standalone console are the IP address of the fixed station interface and control and voice port numbers. Additionally, the DFSI repeater type and channel setups are configurable. When configuring for a server console, additional fields are enabled. The server control port field, which is the port number used by all consoles to communicate control commands. The multicast address fields are multicast address and port numbers used by all consoles with inside the system to communicate voice. When configuring a client console, you can see that the information for the fixed station interface is now grayed out. A new field has been enabled the IP address of the server console. Enter the IP address of your system server console here. The voice multicast address and port numbers should match the system's server console configuration. Now when configuring the console for client console with server backup features, the IP address and port numbers for the fixed station are re-enabled. These fields are used by the backup server when the primary server fails. The system also supports backup fixed stations. The server console and backup server consoles support entering the IP addresses of the backup fixed stations. Check the backup enabled and the backup fixed station setup will become ungrade. Pressing the backup fixed station setup button will open the backup fixed station setup window. Here, enter the IP addresses and port numbers used for your backup fixed station. Each P25 DFSI line in your design will require a P25 DFSI window. In Designer, insert a button, select or open up the properties. The UI element function should be P25 DFSI window. Be sure to associate with the correct line in your design. By design, all P25 DFSI lines in your design must have a dispatch window. This window can be enabled or disabled, but must be in the design. Talk Group and Unit ID will be presented on this button. The Receive All Talk Groups checkbox allows the dispatcher to hear all talk groups transmitting through the fixed station repeater. When unchecked, only the selected talk group will be heard. The Receive All Private Calls checkbox enables the dispatcher to hear private calls not directed at the dispatch console. This allows for a dispatcher to hear all private calls going through the fixed station repeater. The P25 DFSI radio list font size field controls the size of the font presented in the drop-down windows for user ID. The password protection group boxes allows the designer to limit the functionality provided to the dispatcher. Checking or unchecking these fields will require a supervisor's password to enable the functionality to be sent to a field radio. To configure the specific color and text of each button with inside the control window, Simply press the Dispatch Window Config button, the configuration window will be displayed. From this screen, any button with inside the pop-up window can be configured for color or text. Simply press any one of the buttons and a programming screen will open up. From here, the up-down color, text color, and text presented on the button can be configured. Also, various buttons can be disabled based on the operations required. Now that we've covered the P25 DFSI configuration windows and per line setups, let's look at the steps required to set up DFSI in your CSOF design. Step 1, click on Edit. The drop-down menu will open up. Select Setup, P25, and then the DFSI tab. The P25 DFSI global setup window will open. Now determine the type of system being deployed. Will it be a standalone console? a system with server console and client consoles, 
or will it even include a backup server console? You should always start your design with either the standalone console or the server console. From there, you can build the other console positions for client or client with backup server. Press OK when complete. Step 2. Go to the Edit, set up per line parameters, the figure above will open. Select the line type for P25 DFSI to the appropriate line needing DFSI control. Next, click on the Signal Setup button for the first line configured for P25 and the following screen will open for Step 3. The control and voice fields are determined by the type of P25 DFSI manufacturer. The following slides will point out where this information can be located at the DFSI programming software. When setting up CSOF's per line signaling parameters for a DFSI line controlling a Tate radio, you will enter the static IP address and control port number that matches the information contained in the Configure tab of the Tate radio programming software, as shown here. Tate radio programming software does not configure the voice port number. CSoft will communicate to the repeater which voice port it intends to use. All you need to do is enter the static IP address of the DFSI repeater and pick a unique voice port number for that line. To configure a Daniels DFSI repeater, simply program in the static IP address on the per line setup. It should match the UIC configuration network tab static IP address as shown. The control and voice port numbers to be used for a Daniels repeater can be found on the UIC programming software FSI tab and should match the per line signaling parameters for the DFSI line being configured for this radio. Specific information to the line can be configured by pressing the Channel Setup button. On the Channel Table Setup screen, you can enter channel number, a name, receive an RX NACs, talk group numbers. This information should correspond to subscriber units programmed in the field. Additionally, the ability to program a channel for analog or digital mode is provided. The programming of RX block is also accomplished here. This allows for parallel receive to be muted when this line transmits. Simply select any line you want muted during transmission. Step 5, you will add the UI element button. Set the function to P25 DFSI window. Now, associate the line with one of your P25 radios. Go to the colors tab and configure for the correct labeling and colors you'd like to use in your design. Now go to the Miscellaneous tab and configure for the desired feature set you'd like to include on this DFSI line. When complete, press the Dispatch Window Config button to configure any changes to the Dispatch Window. Remember, you can change text and color at this screen. When complete, hit the X in the upper right hand corner and press OK on the primary UI Element button setup. Step 6. Complete your CSOFT design with any other lines using standard processes. Remembering to add any additional DFSI lines using the same processes we previously covered. Add your volume controls, main PTT, clocks, frames. Add any standard Telex controlled lines to your design that would require IP223s or IP224s. Let's add the associated buttons to control those lines. Add any required SIP lines or associated control buttons. Add user and group IDs, status and text messages for all your signaling types. The last step is to create or edit your system. Save your design. You now have a standalone console configured and the basis for all other consoles. Using the just created design file, we can easily create designs for server, client, and client with backup. Remember, each console going forward must have a unique console ID and, therefore, a unique design file. Save each design file with the console ID number in the file name to ease any future troubleshooting efforts. If your console system will have a backup server, you need to determine and fill in the working multicast address and port number from your network into the backup server ping address fields. On the per line signaling setup for the DFSI lines, console positions configured for either server, client or client with backup require a voice multicast address and port number. These should be unique on each individual line. Consoles operating as client or client with backup communications require the static IP address of the server and a control port number. These fields should match the static IP address of the server console and its programmed control port number. 
The last step is to save your design files. You should now have a server, clients, and or your client with server backup consoles configured. Make sure each position has a unique console ID. I hope this information was informative and helps you deploy your DFSI solution from Telex Radio Dispatch. Bosch. Invented for life.